What does one do when Perry has been silenced? When your defense has corroded to a degree that defeat is an imminent event. One more blow and your time in the realm will be no more. It is time to awaken your instinctive touch. See beyond the mystery. Demystify the AI. Be one with the code and awaken your instincts. Never let your opponent strike you again. Welcome back, guys. This is Dorky Diggity Dave, and today we're talking about instinctive touch and well first off let me just say yeah i'm a dragon ball fan i loved ultra instinct and whenever i'd get backed into a corner in one of those difficult fights i would imagine that i had ultra instinct and i didn't want to like mess with the copyright so i called it instinctive touch now once this happened i started to notice patterns i started to notice behaviors and i started to notice that they were repeated and they were consistently repeatable and they were able to be countered and countered consistently as well so i developed a bunch of techniques and a bunch of things to look for and tells that I called instinctive touch and we're going to touch on part one today which is observe and counter and part two is coming where we focus on taking control of the fight instead of being more reactive now you're being proactive and taking control of the fight for yourself now with every version update upgrade maintenance the AI is paying attention to you your play style when you tap when you swipe when you block how you use your specials it's all being entered into that learning machine so that it can evolve and further put your skills to the test. It's in the time you did the same thing, it's time to learn how to fight an MCOC like a god. Before we get started, make sure that you are subscribed to all the dorky diggity goodness on the channel. And if you want to see more, click on that notification button. Now enjoy the video. The action point, the heart and soul of instinctive touch. It's the stop point where the AI is figuring out what course of action it's going to take. And as you can see in these examples, in each one, the AI stops for different periods of time before they dash in. But this is your indicator so that you know how to prepare, whether you're going to intercept or you're going to dash back or however you're going to react to what's about to come. Now, this doesn't mean that every time you see the action point that they're going to dash in on you. It just seems like the majority of the time, but there are situations where they'll do different things like say, dashing backwards or using a special. Now to understand this, you have to understand why the action point is happening in the first place. There is a point where both you and your opponent can no longer walk, hence the stop at the action point. I call this the intersection as none of the champions can enter into this space without an action. It's kind of like a crossroads. You either have to attack, dash, throw a special in order to enter. And now that we know this, the question is, Dave, how does this help me? Well, I'm glad you asked, if you asked at all. I know that you did, let's go. So what I'm doing here is I'm forcing a distance larger than the intersection space. Once you do that, then you can force the action point to happen. Because if it's the AI closing the gap, it then makes that slight pause to make its decision. Otherwise, if you do it, then the AI is reacting to you. You don't have a tell anymore, and now your fight has become more random, and you need to be more reactive instead of proactive. So to be clear, if you remove the AI's ability to close the gap, there is no action point, and therefore you lose your tail and the advantage in the process. So be mindful of this when building your strategy. As a point of practice, try going into your matches and try to get as much space between you and the opponent as possible and see if you can force that action point. Once you start recognizing when it happens, you can start training your reflexes to react accordingly. Now one thing to remember is while you're trying to create space between you and your opponent, it is very possible for the AI to pounce on you. 
And while the action point is a great way to see when the AI will do something, it's also very input driven as well. And in these instances, it's better to just dex a second time than to try to react to it last minute. Another good way is to use the action point and take advantage of when the opponent dashes back, then you can dash back as well and create that space. As for intercepting, much of what intercepting is, you can find in the How to Intercept Like a Ninja video. This is how to intercept in regards to the action point as a counter. Once you've gotten comfortable with seeing and recognizing it, it's now about looking at the subtleties of the action. What we're looking for is that slight lean in and that's your entry for attack. The question is though, medium or light? Using a medium attack, while more effective at closing a gap, is highly committal. Once you've done it, there's no way out, and you've got to take whatever consequence comes with it if you're not successful. As you can see here, those are pretty hard hits to the face. The other thing is that with medium attacks, there are more frames involved with the attack and the recovery aspect. So on both sides of that, it's going to take longer than it would had you used a light attack. And also here you can see that while I'm still recovering from my first medium, I'm already full in swing to my second attack on the light attack. Which means that had I missed, I would also be able to dex away or get away much faster than I would had I used a medium attack. Now I've seen a lot of this. You go in, you do three hits, you back off, you go back in, and you do another three hits, you back off, and as you can see, if you're not paying attention and you're just doing this arbitrarily, it's not really the safest way to go about it. Especially when your opponent has a special ready to go, you're just asking to be intercepted with a special. Especially since it seems like the AI launches specials as soon as you swipe anyway. And as you can see here, if I do the same thing with a light attack, it allows me to clear the space and decks accordingly. Also, it's a great way to keep from being countercepted. That's right, I said countercepted. Countered by an intercept, it's my word. Now, if the AI doesn't immediately follow and I mistime my light attack, I have enough recovery frames to still dex the attack, so not only is it good for specials, it's also good for normals as well. But do be mindful of the range and reach of the champion that you're using. However, we'll talk more about this a little later on in the tutorial when we get to reach ability. I use the light attack in two different ways. The first way is the light weight method. <laughs> you set your distance and wait for the action point and initiation. Once you've seen that, you fire off that light attack. However, notice that I'm usually about a champ's length away from the full stage separation. This isn't necessary, but it helps cut the chance of the AI trying to fake you out. So let's take a look at this example. The obvious thing is that I got knocked out, but why? Let's take a closer look. The AI is trying to fake you out. Look at that. Did you see what it did? Let's look at it one more time. This was just beyond the intersection point, so it faked its own action point, it baited a response from me, and it countered accordingly. This AI is very, very advanced. You have to pay attention. So this is why I try to close the space off so that I can decrease the chance of the AI having this opportunity against me. Now, as you can see, there's a fake dash right here, which makes me think that he's coming on in. I swing, and he comes in with the counter. The second way is the flex walk. This is walking right up to the opponent and with a sharp eye and reflexes, reacting to the very moment you see even the slightest movement forward. This technique closes the intersection gap, so you don't have the action point to help guide you here. You also get a feel for this after a good amount of practice and it becomes part of your muscle memory. This however is a more aggressive move and comes with its own set of caveats like, I don't know, mistiming it and getting comboed into oblivion. Okay, so you're probably wondering what this is. Well, this is what I call the peel out method. It's when you hold block and you continuously tap on the right hand side 
and you let go of block as your go point. This way you only have one action instead of two, letting up and then tapping, as opposed to just letting up and the tap takes over. So this is something that you can use to help train your reflexes before you're ready for action. And also spotting and countering this action point with intercepts is a great way to handle the aspect of war nodes that have been kind of plaguing everybody lately. Another benefit of recognizing the action point is that you're now able to dex earlier and avoid gaining a buff. This comes in very handy for any situation that will punish having a buff like Buffet, Dormammu's Soul Leech, or Domino's Critical Failure. Eh, there's others, but those are just to name a few. But that's not the only use. This is a great way to perform shallow evades on a consistent basis. This is going to come in very, very handy for part two. Now the timing here is basically the same as intercepting with the light attack, except you're holding block and you just swipe from the block as soon as you see movement from that action point. Strike matching. Being able to recognize and counter the final strikes of medium and light attacks are key to giving you another tool to use in your arsenal to counter the opponent. This is a very important skill and a matter of practice, memorization, and study. Understanding combos and how they work is a necessary part of honing this skill though. So at its base and simplest form, combos are two mediums or four lights. Now once you've reached a total of either the two mediums or four lights, the combo is over. Now you can max out at a total of five inputs. Now that's not to be confused with five hits, as some champions have multiple hits for their single inputs. So let's take a look at this. This is what Venom's second medium looks like. So this is what we want to be able to see and strike match so that we can go ahead and counter it on our own. So what we're looking for is that top down strike which is right here and there's your opening. One more time. We've got the first medium there. There is the second one and open for attack. This is a really great way for you to study the champions, get a feel for how they attack, and counter accordingly. The second part of strike matching is telling the difference between a medium and a light attack. If, for example, you just finished a combo and the AI wants to counter attack, but parry and block are not an option, and so you're left to dex the attack with a dashback. If you were able to recognize that it was a light attack, you can bet almost every time the AI will close that space with a dash, thus making it very easy to intercept. I call this one the two-piece intercept because you have the first hit, and then the second, it's like a, a two-piece. See? Why is this not in the intercept section? Well, because you didn't learn about strike matching yet, so. Anyway, here are a few more examples. And also, you'll find that you can see these right at the beginning of a match, and you can take the advantage right away. I also favor this over the three light attack backdraft intercept. I can get in more hits, and it's safer. But that's just my preference. Be careful though, because the timing isn't always the same. The AI is very, very aware of these kinds of things. And there are some variations in the way that they fight. So as you can see on the right hand side here, Loki pauses for just a second, which is enough to throw the timing off and get you comboed. Into oblivion. Understanding reachability, body types, and hitboxes is also essential at higher levels of gameplay. Some champions have a shorter reach than others, and there's generally three levels of reach. Short, medium, and long. I know those are very uniquely thought out names, but it doesn't matter. Now, while the timing is generally the same down the brass tacks, some champs with larger reach offer you a little leniency in when you attempt to intercept an opponent, and it doesn't have to be so exact. Champions of note are those with the leg up dash. This seems to shorten the hitbox as they go more upright, it kind of takes you away from a shorter range champion, where on the right hand side you can see Venom Pool having no problem smacking it down. This does come with its own caveats, however, as it extends your hitbox and leaves you open to attack, and especially if you're working on less than 2% health, you don't want to be touched at all. However, 
more on those caveats in part two. Thank you for watching Instinctive Touch Part 1. Guys, you know the name of the game here. Practice, practice, practice. The more the game evolves, the more it's becoming necessary for you to play full stun immune or play a zero damage game going up against masochism, buffet, aspect of war, where tight intercepts are king. It's not getting any easier, so take each of these points into duels and use the arena as your new personal playground. Get these skills down, because I can't wait to see what you guys can do. Thanks again, guys. Once again, this is Dorky Diggity Dave. You just watched Instinctive Touch Part 1, Observe and Counter. I hope this is really going to help your game out. I hope it's going to help you evolve to a whole other level so that you can start fighting zero damage games and start being the god that I know you can be. I hope that you liked the video because it was a lot of work and if you want to see more of this kind of video, go ahead and check out the description below. There's lots of ways to support the channel, especially the Patreon that's down there. That really, really does help out a lot, supports the channel, keeps everything running. So check that out if you can. Now, if you liked the video and I hope that you did, go ahead and click subscribe, click like, leave a comment, share it with your friends, share it with your mama, all that stuff helps me out. And remember, stay dorky and I'll catch you on the flip.